Hello, welcome back to The Crafty Organizer. I'm Noreen Burke, where I love bringing you ideas on organizing, decluttering, DIYs, upcycles, and the occasional craft. Today is a storage upcycle that you're not gonna wanna miss. Over the summer, I had signed up for a wine subscription club through Bright Cellars. I am not promoting them. I'm not sponsored by them. I am here just to talk about their boxes. <laughs> when I got this, I was so impressed with the box. Check this out. It had this great lifting box that secures inside. I always like those. Look at this tray. The minute I saw this, you guys, I thought, "Ooh, I have to save this box. <laughs> now, it came with two inside of it and they are sturdy. Think about it. This held six bottles of wine, so it has to be able to handle the weight. Each one of these is a doubled piece of corrugated cardboard. So I honestly think I could stand on this thing and it wouldn't move. Um, so I've been holding on to it. I got two shipments. Don't judge me. It's been a hard year, <laughs> but now it's time for me to go ahead and start doing something with these. So the other day I was watching the posh paper lady and I love her. I think that the things that she makes look so beautiful and professional. Um, and she shows you great techniques to make these things on a budget. So I'll have her link in the description below. If you have not watched one of her tutorial videos, do yourself a favor and check her out. But she used the paper that I love from the Dollar Tree so much. And she also used some black and white gingham paper, some Buffalo check. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. I've been holding onto these boxes. I've been trying to figure out some sort of cool storage to share with you. And when I saw this, and please, please, please don't throw me shade for this, but I saw this organizer from Totally Tiffany, and I'm sure that the products are phenomenal, but the price point for cardboard, I, I just couldn't do it. So that's when I decided I'm gonna show you how to make amazing storage with these boxes on an extreme budget. Let's get started. The first thing I want to start off saying is as tempting as it is to keep every box, fight the urge. If you are currently in the middle of organizing a space where you're going to need some storage, then go ahead and keep some boxes. But if you're holding on to the box just in case you might need it someday, Give yourself a time frame. Don't let that clutter up your space. Now for these, I knew I wanted to do a storage video for you, so I kept them on hand. The size of these is for a wine bottle. So you can keep your eye out on these. Contact your local Total Wine or any one of your wine distributors and see if they're getting these. Or perhaps you already know someone who gets wine delivery and you could ask them to save them for you. Some things that would fit really well in here, and mind you, I just did my gutter storage, but the small spools of ribbon fit so well in here. I'm almost tempted, but I won't, to get rid of my gutters because this fits so well. And what I'm gonna be showing you how to make, these are going to be drawers that slide out. So this, would be a separate drawer and I could just say what the color was. This would also be great for paint brushes, makeup brushes, uh, for utensils. You could use these for small scraps. There are so many things that you could store in here. Oh, and by the way, because they're over 12 inches, your vinyl for your Cricut and Silhouette would fit rolled up in here too. So, but you could find what you want. You could also save up some shoe boxes, get them all the same size, and you can duplicate what I'm going to create today with a simple shoe box, and then you could add your own divider inside. So let me show you how I'm going to do this. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get some foam core, but you can use cardboard or whatever else you have lying around. I'm going to make the two side pieces. I'm going to have a back piece, and then a top piece that sits on top, and a same size that fits on the bottom. There will be smaller pieces that are just slightly larger than these boxes so that I can slide these in and out. The reason I don't want to not have dividers in is if I want to move out this drawer, I want to be able to just slide it out and have this top drawer remain where it is. If I don't have that divider, 
when I pull this out, this top drawer is going to fall down and I don't want to have to deal with that every single time. So you don't have to put in dividers, but I'm going to choose dividers. I'm going to start measuring the pieces that are going to divide the drawers. I don't want the depth of the drawer to be any thicker than these because if you make it longer, when you push the drawer in, you're going to see this overhang from the front. Likewise, if you make it too short, the drawer will look like it doesn't fit in because it's overhanging. So you want to make sure that that's flush. Now you do want it just a little bit wider. So I've got just a tiny bit on the side here. I'm probably going to take that down to about a quarter of an inch and I'll have a quarter inch on this side. And that way I have room to fit it in and out no matter what. I will get my handy dandy square, which I love so very much. And I will bring it out here just a tiny bit. I'm going to use my new finger cutter, which a lot of you asked about this Fiskars cutter when I did the Love Topiary Letters. I do have this in my Amazon store. This has been one of my favorite new tools, but you can use a steak knife, a sharp knife, an X-Acto knife, whatever works for you. Sometimes I'll use my rotary cutter and that does work as well on foam core. The sharper the blade, the better your foam core will cut. Now I have a piece that is just ever so slightly wider, but it's the exact same depth lengthwise this way. But as you can see, it is just a little bit wider on the ends so that it can slide in and out. My storage thing that I'm making is going to have four drawers, so I will need three of these inserts. Now that I have three pieces, I can go ahead and start sandwiching these in so that I can see exactly how tall my cabinet is going to be. For me, each one of my boxes is three and a half inches. With the foam core as a divider, it's three and three quarters. So I'm probably gonna go four inches total so that I know without a doubt I have plenty of room to slide these in and out. That would be the worst thing is to build this and get ready to pull out a box and I can't get it out. So I'm going to measure that way. So we've got four, eight, 12. So I'm going to go 16 inches. I think that will be enough. We're going to start with a new sheet of foam core and I am going to cut two panels that are 13 inches by 16 inches. Again, these are the dimensions for my specific box. These will obviously be changed for whatever box you use. So I'm gonna cut two of those out, and then once those are done, I will set them aside. Before I get into the next step, I am going to plug in my glue gun and have that warming up so that it's ready once I am going to use it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start covering the dividers. So I get a sheet of the contact paper and I find the pretty edge and put that in the back. I flatten the edge of it and then wrap it over. And what this does is it gives it a really clean edge for us to see. I do use the X-Acto knife to get rid of any air bubbles, but look at that edge. That will be the front where you see the boxes and it'll look really nice. So anything that's extra on the sides, I just go ahead and use the knife to trim it off so that it's clean. And I repeat this process three times for all of the dividers. Now we're ready to start attaching those dividers to the side panels. So I'm gonna measure the in-between parts for each drawer, which happens to be four inches, eight inches, and 12 inches. And I'm just going to make a line. So this is where I'm going to be attaching the dividers to the side panels. And I'm gonna repeat these marks on the other sheet. I didn't do the lines this time, I just did two little dots and you'll see why in a second. Now I'm gonna get my glue gun. The, the thing you wanna do is make sure that you are facing these consistently. So the pretty edge and the top should always be in the same place. So I'm gonna run a bead of hot glue against the first side and I had two little dots at the four inch mark, so I'm just gonna line those up. And then the glue is forgiving, so I'm gonna slide it just a little bit so that it is flush with the front. 
and it only takes about 30 seconds before it's completely cured and in place. Now, something I am adding that I hadn't done before when I made these units is I'm going to add some shipping tape because these boxes are going to be holding some weight to it, so I want to go ahead and reinforce it. So I fold my shipping tape in half, press one side to the side panel and then allow the other half to go against the little divider shelf. I'm going to do this on the top and bottom of each divider shelf as well as doing this in the front and back. This is an optional step but again I don't know what I'm going to be putting in my drawers and I want to make sure that it holds up. Once I have the support tape in for all four positions I'm going to go ahead and repeat the step of running a bead of glue making sure that it's in the correct position and this is going in the 8 inch mark for me. And again, make sure it's flush to the front. We'll go ahead and add the shipping tape just to give it that reinforcement. And now I can add that third shelf and this is at the 12 inch mark. And I've got two dots so I just line it up and again, make sure that it's flush. So do you see how these will divide each one of those boxes and allow them to slide in and out? Now we're ready to attach the other side panel. So this is where those lines will help because I'm going to be running the bead of glue along the whole line so that I can go ahead and put the supports on top of it. I hope that made sense. So I'm going to run the bead of glue and I'm going to do these one at a time and then I can make sure that the shelf is completely lined onto it. One last time, bead of glue and then I can make sure that that support piece is attached to it. Now I am going to do the same steps with that tape to make sure that they are all in position but you don't need to see it this time. So here is the back side and you can see the shelves are ugly underneath but nobody's going to see that. But when you flip it around, you have these lovely edges and the tops of each one of these will be really pretty if I take a drawer out. And speaking of the drawers, here's what it's going to start looking like. I don't have the bottom or top on yet, but you can see how beautifully that fits inside. They'll just slide right in. I'm so excited about how this is coming together. This is feeling super sturdy. And each one of these will just slide right out. Can you already think of some uses you would have for this? So the next step is to cut out the bottom and the top pieces. So I'm just going to rest my unit right on top of a new sheet of foam core. And I want this to be flush to the whole corners. I don't want it to fit inside of the supports. I want it to fit the entire unit. So I'm going to go ahead and measure again and mine is just a little bit bigger now so make sure it fits what you have which is why I didn't cut them before. I wanted to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. I'm going to go ahead and cut the whole length of this. It'll just be easier for me and again keep measuring so that it doesn't get wonky at all. You don't want any trapezoids. And I'm going to use the outside edges just so I only have two raw edges. Go ahead and take that sticker off now that you have those top and bottom pieces cut out. And now it's time to get the idea of what it'll look like. Look how perfectly those top and bottom pieces fit. So I'm just going to attach each seam one at a time and I'm so sorry for the camber angle on here. I just didn't have any more space. So I'm going to do the first seam and make sure that everything is lined up super flush. Get a scrap of the foam core if you need it so that when you press it down if anything seeps out you can just wipe it away because you don't want any glue on the outside. It will interfere when you try and lay the contact paper on. So get those nice and flush and I'm going to go ahead and get a little scrap here and just wipe away the excess that came through. And now we can repeat that process on the other end but look at how clean of an edge that is. Now the interesting thing with the foam core is it kind of already has a groove into it so look at how the glue gun just slides along the seam. It's actually really nice. So I'm going to go ahead one more time and just make sure that everything is lined up. If there is any excess, I'll wipe it off. 
have the tape ready because I want to make sure that this doesn't go anywhere on you, but I'm going to put the back piece on first. So the pretty edges are the front. I don't want to put the back on that. I want to make sure it goes on the other side. So I am going to go ahead and measure and make sure that it fits along the back side. And once again, I'm just going to line it up to a scrap that I had, but I'm going to use the clean edges of it. Then I'm going to get out my square one last time. I'm going to double check those measurements and then cut it out. Now when it came to attaching the back, I did it in the bottom portion first so that I could get those corners really secured. And then I pulled it around and just kind of wiggled the nozzle of my glue gun in to fill up the rest of the seam. And I reached inside if I needed to just to make sure that it was very flush along all of the seams. Once I got all four corners of that done, I went ahead and attacked it with that shipping tape just to make sure that this guy was going to be sturdy enough to handle anything I put in these drawers. Once that was all done, here's what it looks like. I am so impressed with what this looks like. They slide out easily. It looks great. You could be done at this point, but I do want to make it look just a little bit more finished, so I'm going to attack it with my contact paper so that it matches my office. Here it is. I think it is super cute, and props to the posh paper lady because this contact paper I am not an expert at. So I used some expletives and a little bit of shipping tape in those areas where it was not cooperating. There was a film on my boxes which was not allowing the contact paper to stick to it well, but let me tell you, it stuck like a champ to the foam core pages. So I've given you just a couple of options for the handles and these are just hot glued on so I'm not going to actually pull on them, they'll pop right off but I've got the little handle that I used in the apothecary uh, dupe that I did. These are the farmhouse pulls that are in my office already. This is just a little glass knob, and then I made a contact flap that's pretty discreet that you can pull out and use. But this, I'm not suggesting you run out and get wine storage like this, but if you know someone who gets wine shipments, you guys, get these boxes from them. They are so awesome. I'm gonna use mine for all of my little electronic items for when I'm filming. I have a ton of little cables and memory cards and mics. This is going to be the perfect solution for all of that. And it slides out so easily. And again, the reason we did the partitions is so you can take one out and it doesn't interfere at all with the other storage pieces. Oh, told you that was just glued on. So let me know which of the handles you like. I am leaning between either the small apothecary pole or the farmhouse, but here's one more thing I want to show you just in case you're able to stumble across these wine boxes. So these went inside to hold the neck of the bottle in place. But guess what? Let me get one out. If you've got things in here that you're dividing, because they're already sized, they're the perfect little divider to subdivide things in here. Oh my gosh. So if you drink wine, uh, contact Bright Cellars, find somebody who is getting these boxes. These are the best. I only drank two bottles of the wine. I'm not a big wine drinker. I had planned on giving it away for the holidays and then we didn't get to do anything for the holidays. So I have a bunch of wine that I'll eventually drink. But this, like I said before, you can definitely do with shoe boxes. The main thing is finding a consistent size. You could create your own dividers inside with the remaining foam core, but there's no reason why you can't make an amazing storage unit inexpensively. This one cost me $5. I, I used three sheets of foam core and two rolls of the contact paper, five bucks. May I remind you how much the one I found online was? So as I mentioned in the beginning, try not to make storage just for the sake of making storage. Find a specific need that you have 
and make the storage match that. This was a do as I say, not as I do. But these boxes, you guys, were too cool to not save and create into storage. I am excited that I now have a safe place to store my microphones because they're pretty delicate. It's the perfect storage place. And these are so sturdy. So if you want to duplicate this and you can't find the wine boxes, definitely check out some food boxes that you might be able to replicate. The main thing is finding something that's consistent in sizing. And the big key, making sure you have that little separator behind so that everything stays in place. And then you could just slide the drawers right back in. I ended up deciding on using the apothecary pulls. I just thought it looked really cute and it gives me the ability to label right on it. I got these from Amazon. I think I got a dozen of them for $8. I'll have that in my Amazon shop, but that link is in the description below. Also, I would love to hear what you would use this specific one for. Thank you so much for watching. A huge thank you to my patrons who allow me to keep making these videos and they're also helping me to do the virtual organizing, which I'm trying to do once a month. If you're interested in that, that's in the description below. Please take a second to hit the subscribe button. And if you liked this video and had value in it, please click that like button. I'll see you guys in just a few days. Bye.